Here I have five different micro FPV quadcopters. The Mobula 7, the Gnarly Primo 2.5 inch, the Armaton Tadpole 2.5 inch, the Pygmy Rattler 3 inch, and the Diamondback Rattler 3 to 4 inch hybrid. A couple of them have the same FPV camera, the Cadex Baby Rattel, and four out of the five fly with TBS Crossfire. But there's only one thing all five have in common, and that's an all-in-one flight controller, also known as a Whoop Flight Control Board. This is where the flight controller and the ESC are combined all in one board. Not so long ago, these were only used for Whoop-type quads with tiny motors like this. Just within the past year, we've seen these types of all-in-one flight controllers get beefier ESCs with higher voltage ratings like this Beta FPV F4 V3 all-in-one Whoop flight controller with a 20-amp 4-in-1 ESC that I have on all three of these quads. And it works great. The point I'm trying to make is we're in the middle of an all-in-one flight controller evolution. And in my opinion, this trend is only going to increase with the use of all-in-one flight controllers for FPV drones of all sizes. These all-in-one flight controllers aren't just for whoops anymore. Today, I'm going to introduce you to a new one I've just come across and compare it with a Beta FPV Toothpick F4 V3 all-in-one flight controller I've been using. This is the Flywoo Goku GN745 F7 all-in-one flight controller. It comes with a 470 microfarad 25 volt capacitor and some grommets. It even comes with an XT60 connector and leads. It weighs in at 7.81 grams, 32.94. Thirty-two point ninety-four. The mounting holes are your standard twenty-five and a half by twenty-five and a half. It's got two different becks for five and nine volts. It's got a three point three volt pad over here. It's got an eight megabyte flash black box chip and a barometer. It takes two to six s power input and has a forty amp continuous current rating. It's got an eight layer. PCB, which among other things means it's going to be more durable than others. This is the documentation for it, and it's got the complete wiring diagram for you showing both digital and analog video transmitters, various receivers, your buzzer and LEDs, a GPS module, and even a Bluetooth module. It also shows you how to configure your ports tab for the various UARTs. Now, if you're concerned at all about how to make any of these connections to the pads on this all in one flight controller, no need to be intimidated. Let me show you how quick and easy it is to solder a wire to one of these small pads. I'm going to use this 3.3 volt pad here for a little demo. These are some of the soldering tools I use. I've got a complete list of all my build gear on the build supplies and tips page of my TMAC FPV site. I'll link to it in the video description below. First, I always set my soldering iron to 475. That's what I found works best for me, soldering these micro FPV drone parts. I use a narrow pointed tip rather than a flat one. Next, we tin our solder tip and wipe it down with a wet sponge. This makes it shiny. Then we tin our bare wire with a little solder. Now we just gently paint the pad with a very small amount of solder. Like that. Now we move the bare wire into position so it's touching the solder on the pad and apply heat with the tip of the soldering iron so the solder flows. Remove the solder iron and the heat and it solidifies. There we go, all done. Let's see what Betaflight firmware comes with installed. We connect to our computer, go to the CLI tab and type dump all. Then we scroll back to the top. I haven't done any configuration of this flight controller at all yet. We scroll back to this top and we see that it's got Betaflight 4.2.0 installed with our target for our firmware as Flywoo F745. While we're here, I might as well copy this dump all file with the firmware it originally came with and paste it to a Word document, then save it to my computer in case I need to reload it again in the future in the highly unlikely event I screw up the firmware somehow. <laughs> this is always a good thing to do. So we go here to hashtag version and copy all of this. Copy. 
Word document, paste, and save this somewhere to your computer for safekeeping. This firmware that it comes with, 4.2.0, should work just fine the way it is, and there's no need to flash it with any other newer version unless you know for a fact by reading the version release notes there's features on a newer version of Betaflight you need or you want to have. I mentioned earlier I was going to compare the Flywoo GN 745 all-in-one flight controller to the Beta FPV F4 V3 all-in-one flight controller. I thought while I was at it, I might as well compare all four of the flight controllers I recommend on my website for your micro FPV drone build. I've also included another all-in-one flight controller, which although I haven't tried yet, appears to be comparable in most aspects to the Flywoo GN 745 F7, the iFlight all-in-one beast F7. The features we'll be comparing are over here on the left. The three all-in-one flight controllers are in the first three columns, whereas the 20 by 20 flight controllers and ESCs are in the last two columns. So when it comes down to size and weight, remember for the 20 by 20 stacks, you need to add the weights of both the flight controllers and the ESCs. So with the all-in-one flight controllers, you're not only saving weight, but you're also saving space with one board instead of two, which means if you have a frame that allows you to lower the top plate by using shorter standoffs, such as any of my Rattler frames, you get the added benefit of saving weight with the shorter standoffs as well. With regards to power input, I run 4S on all of my micros with at least two and a half inch props. So all of these meet that need. All have MPU 6000 gyros, which is good, and none of these have pin connectors, which I also think is good. When it comes to the number of UARTs, which gives you the ability to connect various peripheral devices, I want at least three, and the Beta FPV all-in-one gives me that. However, the Flywoo Goku all-in-one, which has seven, is amazing and actually beats out the two 20 by 20 stacks in that regard. They all have good documentation, although the only place I could find the iFlight F7 online is at Pyrodrone. The other three features that are important to me are external buzzer support, since I like to install self-powered buzzers like the Lucky Box or Vifly buzzers. For me, they have to have black box capability since that's an outstanding tuning tool. And we're now also able to use the black box gyro file with just about any camera to stabilize our flight videos, similar to GoPro footage. Eight megabytes a flash memory will get you about one to two average duration flights logging capability before you need to erase the files to record again, which is really no big deal at all. I want the ESCs, whether they're integrated with the all-in-one flight controller or as a separate board, to have at least a 20 amp continuous rating. If you're aware of any other all-in-one flight controller with black box capability, a similar number of UARTs, and at least a 20 amp ESC rating, let us all know in the comments below. Of course, cost can always be a factor. Looking at all of these options, if they're in stock, I'll be using one of these three all-in-one flight controllers for all of my builds, and preferably the Flywoo Goku GN745 F7 all-in-one flight controller. It's got everything I need, and more, and at a very reasonable price point. Now you've got an idea of what this Flywoo F7 all-in-one flight controller could do, and I've got a decision to make on what build to put it in. If you've got an idea, let me know in the comments section below. For more fun stuff, make sure to check these out next. Thanks for your time. I'll see you next video. Clear skies, friend.